Pollution is a chemical where we don't intend it or we don't want it. I first want to understand, well, how did that pollutant get there? Why is it there? And then how can we prevent the negative impacts of that? My research looks at how pollution occurs in the environment. There's a lot of ways that my research is innovative, but one way that I am most proud of is the way that I am very intentional about how I approach the context in which the pollution occurs. I look at different regions, where the pollution is, what does the community need, and within that, how can we use science to understand that pollutant and how can we reduce and prevent future exposures? Engineers design solutions. I learned that as an early part of my undergraduate training. And something I do when I'm teaching classes is I tell engineers, we will design a solution, but 75 to 90% of this class is gonna be about defining the problem. I hold that true in the research that we do. So when we're defining a problem, what we first do is say, gosh, what part of this scientific expertise or engineering expertise, technical expertise do I have? And so after I've defined that boundary of what I know, I say, who else do we need to bring into our team? Sometimes that's another scientific expert, maybe someone with biomedical expertise, maybe it's a partner from industry who understands how they used a chemical. Once we get a team like that and we maintain relationships, that is how we are defining our problem. And then I find in that last final push of 25 or 10%, we come up with a really creative, innovative solution. As we move forward, the entire country and the globe moves forward on an emerging contaminant of concern called per and polyfluoral alkyl substances, Kentucky has had to really face forward on this contaminant. We see communities specifically impacted by this contaminant. And we also are looking at how do we respond to protecting um, public health here in Kentucky and also being mindful of economic impacts. We've been very interested in how aging infrastructure, both pipes buried beneath the ground, as well as building infrastructures can deteriorate and how that can pose unexpected exposures to humans. And so we've been conducting experiments looking at piping fixtures. We breathe about 20,000 liters of air a day, and most people aren't aware of that. But when we're thinking about what indoor air pollutants might cause in terms of human health, it can be a very low concentration. And so we're very interested in what types of sources can contribute to indoor air pollution. And so we're looking at sources that have never before really been investigated. So we do computational modeling. We also do these experiments um, with pipes looking at chemical fluxes, also pressure, depressurization. We also look at developing QAQC or quality assurance for new sensors that would be used in environmental field testing and laboratory testing. I have the honor of serving as the director of the UK Superfund Research Center, which is a large research enterprise funded by the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. So within UK Superfund Research Center, we have faculty from six different colleges involved, and our graduate students are involved from six different colleges. Our graduate students create their own cohort, they interact, so they're getting trained from the very beginning on how to interact across disciplines. This type of experience, this type of training, I think it's the only way to really solve real world relevant problems. And the best thing is, is that it's here at UK, where we can have an impact in Kentucky. Civil engineering is really about engineering societies, right? Building societies, building cities. Well, cities are meant to serve people. And so if my original very idealistic view was to protect the environment, I was going to have to come to terms with the fact that people were using the environment from industry, which often causes pollution, and then communities that can be sometimes adversely impacted. At the same time, I'll admit communities are often positively impacted by the economic benefits because you're forced to consider all of those impacts, you know, everything, the positive, the negative, and the neutral. Once you can do that, it's amazing the creativity you can come up with in innovating research solutions.